Rise and shine with the Word of God. Wake up Saturday mornings with a purpose. Tune in at 10 a.m. and join Antonia Roman as she sings and reads the Word of God. The Word of God will give you insight for the purpose in your life. Now here is your host, Antonia Roman. Buenos dias, amigos. Buenos dias. Heavy. Hello. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. I hope that you had a uh, good night's rest last night and that you are, um, you know, getting through the holiday season. We just celebrated Thanksgiving. I hope you had a great time with your families. And um, as we're preparing for Christmas this year and um, just things that are happening around the world, changes, many changes are coming, many things are happening. Whether they're good or bad, you've got to stay grounded in the Lord and know that he loves you and he's always here to protect you. And um, we prepare ourselves and have the protection of the Lord and the instructions of the Lord and the examples of the Lord of what we should be doing in our lives based on what we read in the Bible. <laughs> so if you've been following along with us, we have been in the book of Job now for many weeks and we have been discussing Job's life, uh, his turmoils, his um, distress, how he's dealing with it how he's reacting to it. And ultimately, you know, we've been reading and learning about his life, his situation, and how he's handled that, uh, especially through everything he's gone through in his life up to now. And as readers of the word in the Bible, it is important for us to read and understand the circumstance of each individual that went through a major turmoil in their life and how their attitude or gratitude has led them and has allowed them to move forward irregardless to the circumstances in their lives and prepare them and have them go through a process so they can get out to the other side and ultimately uh, continue their lives accordingly to how God has the purpose and the will for their lives on a daily basis. So we can learn a lot from the book of Job as we see what he's endured and where he is right now. And up to this point, we have been reading about all the things that happened to him everything he's dealing and facing, everything that has affected his, his life, his livelihood, his reputation, um, his physical health, his mental health, his emotional health. We see everything that has happened up to this point. We also see that people have tried to, to people did visit him and are speaking to him, trying to be a support system. But sometimes, you know, support, support systems may not come with the greatest, you know, uh, intentions of what comes out of their idea through their mouths of what they feel, you know, you're doing or not doing. And for Job, you know, this is just like giving him more um, of a thought process of not only is he suffering what he's been suffering, but now he has to hear things from people he, f he feels and knows to be dear friends which is not something easy for us to deal with. When someone comes to us and says, hey, I'm here to support you, but I, I got my own opinion about something that you're doing. Why don't you hear me out so I can try to help you? And a lot of us do that in life, my friends. We're constantly going to our friends who are struggling with something and we're trying to fix them. We're trying to give them remedies. We're trying to help them, excuse me, see through the other side of things. 
And we think we have all the answers to their problems. But the reality is we don't. <laughs> so because we don't, we need to shut up. <laughs> we need to stay quiet. And we need to just be there as a person who's listening um, and just trying to comfort someone. So we are in the book of Job. We are in chapter 13. We're going to finish chapter 13 today. And in chapter 13, we had left off um, where Job was being told, uh, you know, by by his friends, Job was responding to his friends, that is, and telling them that no matter what, at the end of the day, um, he's going to come out a winner. He's going to come out on the other side. Um, that he's still protected, you know, with God's sal- from God's salvation in his life. That he's still a man of integrity. <clears throat> that he's still doing all the right things. And that no matter what, in the end, if this is what God intends for him to uh, continue to endure, so be it. But that at the end of the day, he does know that God is still in control. And, uh, you know, whatever God has in store for him is what's going to happen. And I know sometimes it's not easy for us to look at life that way when we're going through stuff. You know, uh, some of us curse God. Some of us think that God abandoned us, that God doesn't care. In this situation, Job knows God cares. And he's also aware of the fact that whatever God has intended for him to experience, this is what he just needs to experience. And even though he can't understand why, the important thing is that God is still in control of his life. So as he's been answering his friends and telling them his opinion as well to what they said to him, he continues to now speak to them. And we're going to start in uh, verse 20. So chapter 13, verse 20. And this is what it says. Only two things do not do to me. Then I will not hide myself from you. Withdraw your hand far from me and let not the dread of you make me afraid. Then call and I will answer or let me speak. Then you respond to me. How many are my iniquities and sins? Make me know my transgressions and my sin. Why do you hide your face and regard me as your enemy? Will you frighten a leaf driven to and fro? And will you pursue dry stubble? For you write bitter things against me and make me inherit the iniquities of my youth. You put my feet in the stocks and watch closely all my paths. You set a limit for the soles of my feet. Father, thank you so much for this word. We know this word is truth. We know this word gives us life. We know that Job um, has experienced such uh, turmoil in his life that we can learn from everything that has happened to him, how his personality and his character has handled every situation during his time of his life when he was suffering. And we can learn a lot from it. And we can also learn a lot of how he speaks, the words that come out of his mouth, and how he's still continuing to be a man of integrity and good morals and still being hospitable (laughs) to his three friends that are there in his home telling him all their opinions. So I thank you for your word. Amen. You know, my friends, sometimes it's not easy to rebuttal back to friends who have told us deep things or claim to know deep things about us. Sometimes it's just very hard to deal with other people's opinions about us or their judgment or their conclusions of what we've done. 
and why we're facing the circumstances we're facing. Sometimes I'm guilty of that too. Sometimes someone will come to me and say they're struggling in an area, they're going through a turmoil in their lives. And I sometimes take three steps back and I look at them and I try to analyze them of why they're in that situation. Because that's what we do in the natural all the time. We automatically jump to conclusions. We automatically assume things. We automatically believe that based on the uh, relationship we have with this person and we know about their personality and their character, that this is what they're experiencing because of A or B. We automatically do that as human beings. But God does not want us to do that. God wants us to look at people with love, compassion. He wants us to uh, love on people. Uh, be there for them, be there as a comfort, if we can be there as a comfort, uh, help those who are struggling in areas where they need help. And God definitely wants us to demonstrate to them the goodness that he has and the relationship that he can have with them in their lives. We are constantly looking at things a certain way in the flesh, but we also have to understand that although we see things happening in the flesh, and this is the circumstance, the situation at hand, we need to see things in the spirit. We need to tap into our heavenly father for that reveal, that wisdom, that revelation that would help us in our time of trouble and time in need. So right now, as we look at Job's situation, uh, we've got to do that. We've got to look at Job and say, hey, I'm not here to judge you. I am here to let, see what's going on in your life and just see how I can be of a help or support. And I'm doing the same thing right now with a friend of mine who's going through a, a major struggle right now in their lives. and. Um, there's only so much we can also do as friends to help other people. But ultimately, one thing that's powerful is prayer to help that individual individual in their time of need. So if there's one thing we definitely could do for people is pray. Pray and um, let them know that we're a support system. We're tapping into our Heavenly Father to perform a miracle, supernatural a miracle in their lives so they can come out of the rut that they're in and continue to move on with purpose of what God has in store for them in this life. So when it says here, and Job starts, has been telling his friends, you know, that he has his salvation. He's not going to be a hypocrite and speak to God if he's doing all this, all this sin that they're assuming he's doing. And that God will, um, you know, he will come out a winner. He will be vindicated. He will be, um, see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, and it's been taking a while, but he still has the hope and the faith to believe that God is going to help him in his life and bring a resolution to what he's been facing and dealing with. And that's why when he speaks, and he's talking to his friends. He's not just speaking to them in response to what they said to him. He is also speaking in a, in a sense of prayer as he's speaking to them. And when he starts to say, only two things do not do to me, then I will hide myself from you. Withdraw your hand far from me and, not, and let not the dread of you make me afraid. You know, he's talking to his friends, but he's also speaking out to God. Because in this moment in Job's life, he's relying on the Lord for his breakthrough. Because he still has relationship with the Lord. He has not turned away from the Lord. 
But he is also dealing with a situation where he's also responding to his friends and explaining to his friends, like, don't come here judging me and don't come here, you know, uh, to make me afraid, even more afraid of the situation at hand. Because sometimes we can give do damage to other people by telling them more things when they're going through something major in their lives. And we're not supposed to be putting more fire to the coal, coal to the fire. We're supposed to be um, a beacon of light to people and encouraging them and giving them the words that they need to hear and must hear to know that there's a hope and a future for them, irregardless to what they're struggling with in their lives. And that they shouldn't throw in the towel, they shouldn't give up on God, that they should know that they can rely on their Heavenly Father who sees all things in detail of what they're experiencing and enduring, and that God is working behind the scenes, even though they can't see it or feel it, to help them come out of that situation in due season and in due time. And in the process, God is helping them and allowing them to build character. So when he says, only two things do not do to me, then I will not hide myself from you. Withdraw your hand far from me and let not the dread of you make me afraid. Up to this moment, everything in Job's life has been very dreary. It has been so gloomy, gloom and doom of everything that's happened. It's like if he has this black cloud over him with everything that has happened. And, you know, he's dealing with such a storm right now in his life that um, he doesn't even know if the storm is ever going to stop, dry up, stop pouring down with more damage. But he, what he is saying is, whatever you do, just, you know, I'm still here, God. I'm not hiding from you. I didn't do anything wrong. I am still here present in the moment and I'm speaking with you and I'm asking you, you know, to, if, if this is the pressure, if this is the misery that I have to endure, that's coming from you, um, just withdraw your hand from me real far and not, let me not, let not the dread of you make me afraid. So as he's talking, to, saying these things, He's not just speaking to God. He's also telling his friends this. Like, yo, dude, I get it. Like, do me a favor. You know, what I don't need is for you to be like coming here <laughs> and telling me all this stuff. And I definitely am not just, you know, uh, going to hide myself from anybody or anything. I'm already hidden in my home because of the disease I have. In, on my body, the sickness that's in my body, on my body, that's so visible to everybody. But to God, I'm not running away from God about anything. I am facing him every day and having a conversation with him every day. Um, and the same way that I'm having a conversation with you guys right now, you know, he's letting them know that at the end of the day, you know, whatever's suppressing him, whatever's bringing him down, whatever's gotten him to this point, um, he's really pleading with God uh, about this situation at hand. But he's also pleading with his friends and saying, listen, guys, I don't need you to add more coal to the fire, you know, and um, and I, I, I don't want to feel like everything you're telling me it's going to have me thinking worse of my circumstance, my situation, or what you think foreseeable is in the future if you don't, if I don't do certain things that you're recommending. And then he goes, then call and I will answer, or let me speak, then you respond to me. You know, he's saying, look, God, you know, I just, just answer me. I, you know, just call on me, Lord, and I will answer. Or let me speak and you respond to me. Because he's, uh, in other words, he's saying, 
to the to God. I want to just have this conversation with you. You know, I am going to say certain things, uh, and oh, and then you're going to respond to me, and then I'm going to respond to you because this is our relationship that I have with you, Heavenly Father, and it's a conversation we're going to have. It's not just me talking. It's a two-way street. And that's how we need to handle our lives, my friends, that when we're speaking to God, it is a two-way conversation. It's not just you speaking the whole time and not listening to God to hear his answer and it's, and vice versa. It's not just you then just listening to God and then giving him an answer or respond. It is a back and forth relationship conversation so that you're both on the same page with each other. And just like a human being, when you're talking to God, it's, you're talking to a person, it's like the same thing talking to God. You're listening to that person, you're responding, you're, they're responding, God is responding to what you're saying, right? And what we should be saying are things that are fruitful that come out of my, our mouths and not things that are of disdain, uh, misery, or, you know, cursing, or, you know, just uh, speaking out of rage or uh, irritation or anger or anything like that. It needs to be a gracious conversation uh, that each you can have with God and know that he is listening, he's there in the moment, and he's also responding. And he's telling that to his friends too. You know, I'm going to speak. You're going to say something. I'm going to respond. You're going to respond. Like, this is a conversation we're having. But he's also, as Job is saying this, he's doing this prayer unto God. And he says, make me know my trans... He goes, how many are my iniquities and sins? In other words, he's like, wait, you're asking me how many are my iniquities and sins? You know, like, if you really think that's a question here, based on what his friends told him, you really want me to try to identify that, you pinpoint that. You really want me, you want me to backtrack and be like, wait a minute, how many iniquities, uh, wait a minute, how many sins have I done? What, what have I really, um, done in my life? How have I mistreated other people? You really want me to try to pinpoint the sins that I've been doing. And my iniquities that I have, <coughs> excuse me, are happening to me because they're just happening to me. Doesn't that actually mean I've sinned, right? However, Job during this time has been saying to God, hey, God, if I have sinned, if I, if I missed something, if I didn't realize I've done something, please let me know because then I want to do the right thing, right? Like his friends are telling him, you should just do the right thing and surrender it all to God, give it to him. He will help you in the situation and he will help you come out of come out of it. Now for Job, it's not so easy to be like, hey, you know, uh, okay, I guess I'll just accept the fact that I have sinned. No. He's questioning also himself and saying, My sin? What what did I do? Did I do something wrong? Did I say something wrong? Did I treat someone wrong? Did I not do the right thing, God? You know, if that's the case, uh, yes, then I should be punished. I should face the consequences. But if I haven't done anything wrong, I still don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through. But at the end of the day, I trust you, Lord, because you are by my side. And I know you are because I have relationship with you. You know, when we know that we have relationship with our Heavenly Father, there's not much to doubt, my friends. We know he's there. We know he's listening. We know he's embracing us. He's caring for us. And most of all, we know that he's helping us in this situation. And that's something that a lot of us miss the beat on. Because every time we go through something, we need to just stop, be still, and know that God is there. That he's still next to us in our presence. That, you know, even if he's silent, he's there. A lot of times we feel that since God's silent, he's not there. Sometimes God's just observing. Sometimes God is just really watching what you're doing. And that sometimes he doesn't even have to say anything to you. He's just looking at every move that you're making. He's observing you. 
And we need to remember that there are times that when God observes us, we got to do the right thing. We can't just come to the conclusions and be like, oh, God's not here, so I'm just going to do whatever I want. No, that's not true. You can't do that. You may feel like God's not there, but he's there. He sees you. He knows exactly what you're doing. Stay on that straight and narrow road, my friends. Don't sway one way or the other. Know that God is watching, no matter what. (laughs) And one thing that Job really wants to identify here is that, you know, ultimately, if he has sin and God knows the sin, God will then expose him with that sin. So, you know, he's not just saying a prayer unto the Lord about, hey, Lord, this is the situation at hand. But he's also speaking to his friends and his friends are hearing him. Right. And it says here, uh, make me know my transgression and my sin. In other words, he said, hey, God, if I because of this iniquities and stuff and the sin and sins. Hey, you know what? Let me know what I've done wrong and let me know what my sin is. Right. This is Joe speaking to the Lord. And as he's doing this prayer unto the Lord, his friends are also listening. You know, he said, make me know my transgression and my sin. Why do you hide your face and regard me as your enemy? Right? Because in this point right now, you know, Job has endured so much. He's been speaking to God a lot. He has been conversating with God a lot. He's been, and at this point, he's saying, you know what? Um. Do not hide your face from me and regard me as your enemy. Like, Lord, if I have done something wrong, show me what I've done wrong. If I've sinned, show me. But don't make me feel as though you've turned your back on me. I can't see you. I can't feel you. And that you regard me as your enemy because supposedly I've done some really bad things that I'm not even aware of what I've done. And here's the thing in life, my friends. Sometimes we do things unintentionally and we do harm to other people, to ourselves, to our family, our loved ones. We don't even realize we've done that. And sometimes we do things uh, intentionally knowing that we're going to hurt somebody, our loved ones, our neighbors, our coworkers, whoever. And when you are just blindsided, meaning like you're so innocent, Because you haven't done anything wrong. You haven't done anything intentional. And you may have done or said something unintentional that did hurt somebody. Then the right thing to do is to say, hey, if I've offended you, if I've said something wrong, if I didn't uh, didn't treat you well, I'm sorry. I apologize. Right? We want to know, like, we've done harm to someone. So then that way we can apologize to them and ask for their forgiveness. And what Job is doing here is that's what he's exactly saying to God. He's just saying, you know, uh, you know, do not hide your face and regard me as your enemy because I'm not, I'm not your enemy, Lord. I I am, I'm here, you know, as your friend. And, um, but if I have done something wrong, please let me know what I did. Expose it. So I know how to fix this situation that I'm in and I need to, and I know how to pray to you to help me fix this situation that I'm in. Because ultimately, we always pray to God to help us in resolving issues in our lives. And then he goes, will you frighten a leaf driven to and fro? You know how a leaf, uh, when the leaves fall from the tree and then it gets windy and the leaves are just being blown, you know, to one way or another uh, with the wind. You know, he's saying, uh, you know, will you frighten a leaf driven to and fro? Will you put, you know, will you put fear on the leaf and, um, and frighten it even more as, you know, the wind is just shifting it back and forth in certain ways that the leaf cannot control itself, has no control of how the wind is pushing them to the left or right. You know, there's times we see that when it's very windy, the leaves are like being blown from one place to the other. And those leaves don't have control of being blown. So they're already like not in control being pushed by the wind automatically and can't do anything about it. But then are they also going to be tormented, you know, on top of that? Like, this is what Job is like asking, right? 
And it says, and will you pursue dry stubble? You know, listen, people go through things in life where they start to feel down and out, defeated, overtaken. Um, and they feel like there is no, there's no remedy. There's no resources. There's no way of coming out of their situation. And he's saying like, you know, would we continue to pursue those situations where they're already dried out because people lose hope. So they get dry, very dry. Um, if you sometimes speak to some people, depending what they're going through in their lives, you can see that they're very, their joy is gone. They're very dry. They're very mundane. Um, they don't have the light glowing in them anymore. You know, they're, um, they're, they're dried out. Sometimes when we're dried out, my friends, we have lost all possibilities of even thinking that there's an inkling, uh, possibility of a miracle coming into our lives or even a breakthrough happening in our lives. So, you know, he's asking these questions like, you really going to pursue the person already who's like down and out and not doing very well and feel and feels defeated? Really? You know, it's like when they say, you know, you're going to kick a dog when he's already down, right? That phrase that you hear, you know, he's asking all these questions. He's praying this to the Lord and asking these questions. And he's saying, for you write bitter things against me. And make me inherit the inequities of my youth. In other words, he's saying, look, uh, these are things that you not only is maybe possibly happening in my life based on what I'm enduring, God's, and the God knows this, but you as my friends also, because he's, he's talking to his friends, he's saying this praise, talking to God, but he's also talking to He said, you write bitter things against me and make me inherit the inequities of my, inequities of my, of my youth. You know, his friends, if you think about it, although they were trying to give him good advice, they were also speaking very negatively about him. They were speaking about him in a way that was bitter. <laughs> it wasn't like sweet. You know, they had their opinion. They came with their opinions and they spoke to him how they wanted to speak to him based on what they felt was happening and how they feel is happening, what's happening in their, his life. You know, they've come to their own conclusions and assumptions. So some of the things that were coming out of their mouths were not sweet. It was very bitter. And, you know, the last thing we want to do, my friends, is speak to someone in a bitter way and say bitter things to them when they're already hurting and wounded and they're already de feeling defeated. That doesn't help their situation. It just makes it worse. And as beacons of light, my friends, we need to be very cognizant to know, hey, I need to tread lightly with this situation of my friend or whoever, and I need to give words of encouragement. Um, I can maybe give some advice and, and be like, hey, you know, well, because of what's happening, these could be some possibilities. But at the end of the day, my job is to encourage that person, to let them know they can hold on to God's promises in their lives. Let them know that they can have a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to help them in their time of trouble, and that God is constantly watching them and by their side, and they need to trust their Heavenly Father and know that there's going to be an, an outcome to this that will be better than what they're currently experiencing. And they need to trust the Lord and trust on His promises that He gives us in His Word in the Bible. You know, um, our God has a purpose for our lives. Um, and, and Jeremiah 20, it talks about, you know, that God has a plan for you, you know, to prosper you and to make you well. Even if you're going through something really bad, God is going to make a way for you. Even when you don't feel that there is a way out, he's going to do something miraculous in your life. You just have to continue to have hope for the future that God still wants you to have. Many people throw in the towel and says, oh, my, my, my future is done. I don't even have a future anymore. 
you know, God has allowed this to happen to me. And now I don't see anything positive coming my way. Well, we have to turn that attitude around, my friends. And we have to say, hey, I'm going through this time of trouble. God knows and sees every detail in my life. He's the one who's helping me prosper and move forward. Even though when I don't feel I'm prospering or moving forward, but I know he's doing something. He's working behind the scenes. He's helping me. He's preparing me. And that I will see a light at the end of the tunnel, first and foremost, spiritually in my life. And then secondly, in the natural. Because if we tap into the spiritual world, my friends, and we look at heaven for our help, and we look at heaven for the perfect example to help us, so that the things we are uh, seeing in the spirit will manifest themselves here in the natural, we have to truly believe that. No matter how chaotic things are going in our lives, we have to look at what's happening in heaven, what is happening in the spiritual world first. And we need to understand it, my friends, because in the spiritual world, we're always battling in the, in the physical uh, in the physical uh, realm, but it's in the spirit. So we see it spiritually and we're like, oh my gosh, this is happening in the spirit. I know what's happening now. I can deal with it. And when it's manifesting itself here in the natural or what's happening in the, in the heavens, then we can look at the natural and go, okay, since I saw it in the spirit and God prepared me for it and gave me the scripture, gave me the time of prayer, gave me the right to meditate and get things in order spiritually, now I know how to deal with it in the natural. So when it's happening to us in the natural, it's not affecting us as much in the natural. It's not penetrating our heart. It's not penetrating our mind. It's not penetrating our bones. You know, it's not affecting us as much because we put on the armor of God that protects us from the top of our head to the bottoms of the soles of our feet. And no matter what comes our way, we are prepared and we are standing strong and still in the Lord. And we have to fully believe that, my friends. We have to fully believe that. We have to understand that no matter what we go through in life, God is still on the throne and he's still in control of our lives. We have to ultimately decide and make a choice of, hey, no matter what I'm seeing in the flesh, no matter what's happening to me, no matter how empty my bank account is, no matter how I see like, oh my gosh, I, I, I don't have a job right now. I can't find a job. I'm trying to look for a job. It's not coming. I have no interviews. I don't know what's going on. I've submitted 50 applications. This is just an example of what I'm giving you of myself. But no one's called me, not one interview. What's going on, right? You're like, wait a minute, Lord, how could this be? 50 applications and not one interview? Is it me? Is it my resume? Is it maybe I've done too much in my life? Maybe my resume is a little intimidating. I have no idea. But at the end of the day, I don't get so worked up about it. You know why, my friends? Because I know that God is in control. And whoever he touches in the spirit to then manifest itself in the natural, I'll get a call one day. I'll get an invite. I'll get an interview, right? Because at the end of the day, my friends, God is in control of our lives. And he knows all our needs. He knows what we're lacking. He knows what we need. He knows the areas that we're struggling in. He know, He's aware of that. But he's working it out for us, for those who love him. And that's why you continue to love him and press on and hold on to your heavenly father and embrace him and let him embrace you during this time so he can give you comfort, but that you would also know that he is working behind the scenes and he will do something in your life when you least expect it. You have to have faith and hope and a future. You have to believe in those two words, hope and a future and faith. You have to believe in all that. And it will come in perfect, his perfect timing. And then, you know, he's saying here, and make me inherit the iniquities of my youth, right? After they say all these bitter things about him, you know, just saying, hey, he's saying, hey, uh, are you trying to like uh, blame me like for something like when I was young? You know, when I did maybe things that were innocent, you know, because when we're young, when we're children, when we're toddlers, when we're growing up and we're children and we're teens, sometimes we do things unintentionally, accidentally, you know, we're going through puberty stages and you start making like 
some irrational decisions sometimes and your parents have to deal with you about it. You know, if, if you've done something wrong as a child uh, because of innocence, uh, you know, hitting you and then life hitting you, you know, uh, a lot of people take that with them into their adulthood. And when they're taking all of that into their adulthood, they can never fully recover or fully come out of the situation thinking beyond that circumstance when they were a child. So that's why for us, my friends, we have to be very careful. We have to be aware of the fact that whatever happened to us in the past is the past. And we are now in the current present. And God wants us to be in the present and not in the past. Right? He wants us to understand that what is happening to us as adults today uh, is part of life. Uh, whether you know, it may have had some type of impact for something we did when we were younger. An example would be, let's say you started smoking when you were 16, when you know you wasn't supposed to be smoking. And, um, you know, you continue to smoke and you became a chain smoker. And now you're in your 40s. And um, now you have some type of lung cancer disease. You have something going on with breathing issues or whatever. Then you can say to yourself, man, you know, I look back now, if I was not smoking all that time as a youth, you know, then my life would be a little bit different. But I'm facing now what I'm facing because of what I did when I was younger. Those are realistic things that happen to us in our lives, right? And then there's things that happen in our lives as youth that may not give us an effect that way in our physical state of body, but could give us a mental state in what we're dealing with in everyday life as adults. So whether you've been through some trauma in your life, whether um, you saw things when you were real young, you weren't supposed to see, um, and, or you did things when you were young, you weren't supposed to do. And then now that comes up to you now as a guilt of when you were a child, you know, um, there are things that I remember as a child that I did that were like really stupid and I may have done it. Who knows? Maybe for attention, for love, who knows what, but I do know that from that time until now, even if I am reminded about something in my childhood, which I have very limited, um, memories of my childhood as it is, um, I just look at things and I go, that was the past. And now he's today, the current, the future that's coming. I look at this today. I'm not going to keep looking back to what happened to me. I'm going to continue to move forward. And my friends, you know, Job, God, you know, Job is praying all these things to God, but he is also, um, you know, speaking and his friends are listening, right? And his friends must be wondering like, Okay, what is he talking about? You know, he's talking about this. He's talking about that, right? And then he says, You put my feet in the stocks and watch closely all my paths. In other words, Job is saying, look, you have seen every step that I've taken in my life. You have seen every step that has prospered me. You have seen everything, how I walk. In my life, um, where where I've laid my feet, um, and where prosperity has come from, based on what you've given me, Lord, um, and everything that I have uh, walked by faith, um, you've seen everything that I have done in my life. You know every decision that I made. <clears throat> you know how I handled every circumstance. You know how I've given my life to you, Lord, and feel you, Lord, and I honor you, Lord. You have seen every transaction I've done in my life because you know Job was also a businessman. You've seen how I've treated my children. You've seen how I've treated my wife. You've seen how I've treated my friends. Right. And Job technically is saying right now, like, 
And you see how I'm treating my friends right now, not disrespecting them. They're here as a moral support. But, you know, they're saying some things that are hurtful. But I'm still giving them hospitality. I haven't kicked them out of my house yet. <laughs> I'm still, like, giving them love, loving on them as a friend. Right? Job is saying to God, hey, you have seen every move that I've made in my life. You're very aware. Because you walk with me closely. You're there. Job knows that God's there. And because he says, and watch closely on my path. Job knows that God is watching every path that he's done, everything he's done in his life, every single step he's taken, decision. He knows all that. Everything that he has spoken, said, thought. God knows everything, my friends. So Job knows, hey, God, I know you've seen everything that I've done. And that since you've seen everything I've done, you would also know I haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> right? So he's doing this prayer unto God, like, God, you know the whole situation at hand. You're with me. You're by my side. You see everything. But he's also saying this prayer because he's explaining to his friends, like, you know, God has seen everything I've done. There's nothing for me to hide. Because God does expose things. He lets things out the bag, like they say, when it's necessary and needed. And then he goes, you set a limit for the soles of my feet. In other words, he says, you know, wherever I step, wherever I go, whatever I do, you also have given me a cap. Meaning, you know how far I've gone. You stop me sometimes even in my tracks to go even further. And because you've done that, I just trust wherever I land. I don't start complaining and going, oh, Lord, you brought me this far. Are we going to go a couple of more yards? Should we go a couple of more miles? That is how deeply involved you need to be with God, knowing that he sees everything that you do. And whatever he's given you, whether those are resources, whether those are things you need in your life permanently, whatever it is, you trust that he has brought you to the place you're supposed to be at and you don't continue to bicker and complain about the fact that you haven't gone further. So an example for me is like, I don't sit here complaining of why hasn't God taken me to the desire of my heart to be a showrunner even further then what the things I'm doing creatively in productions, no, I don't do that. I just say, the Lord knows the desires of my heart, where he's taking me right now, which is right now I'm directing a feature film. This is where I am right now. This is where God has landed me right now in this season and this time of 2024, towards the end of the year. I've been filming this for a couple of months now. And at the end of the day, I am very grateful that I'm even here where I'm at. I don't start to bicker and complain to God and say, well, God, you gave me this, but this, you know, how long is it going to be before I get the next thing I want? You know, we're not supposed to be anxious for anything, and we're not supposed to be demanding things from God either. <laughs> we are supposed to be relying on the Lord for him to guide us in every step of our lives. Because in every step that we take and, and the closer we get to those desires of our heart that he, is, he gives to us in perfect timing, we have to be very respectful of that and say, Lord, I'm so grateful to you that I am, I'm even gotten to this point and enjoy the time of this point. You know, God, Job is sort of saying to God, like, you know everything, you know, you know where you've led me, where I've landed, you know, uh, at this point, you know everything, Lord, right? So, and then when he says here, man, decay is like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth-eaten. In other words, he's like, look, even, at, even as uh, human beings, you know, we, we, we decay. Uh, we fall apart. We, um, he's saying, literally, he's falling apart, right? Um, like a rotten thing. Because right now he's dealing with his body ailments, right? He's like, 
my body's falling apart. I'm decaying away with this disease. Uh, but I'm still here, standing strong, no matter what. Job is telling and speaking to God, and not only that, but speaking to his friends, said, even though I'm wa- falling by the wayside here with my body situation, I'm still standing strong in the Lord because the Lord sees everything and knows everything. And he says, and like a garment that is moth-eaten. You know, when we put our clothes in the closet, sometimes we buy these things to help, that give a scent to keep the, keep the moths away. Because if a moth gets into your closet, the moth is going to eat up your clothes because that's what they do. They chew on stuff. So he's saying here as he's praying, like, God knows everything. He knows how far he's taken me. He knows my entire situation. And, you know, even though I'm going through what I'm going through in my body, even though I'm decaying like there's no tomorrow, I'm falling apart, my body is suffering tremendously. I am still standing strong on the Lord. I am still knowing that he watches every situation and every detail in my life. And I rely on him and embrace him and that he's going to, Make a way where there doesn't seem to be a way for me, but I'm going to wait in good timing because I know in good timing, good season, God will turn this around for me. And my friends, we have to have the gratitude that Job has. He doesn't have an attitude. He has gratitude. So my friends, I don't know about you, but this has been a blessing to, uh, you know, go over the scripture with you. Uh, let you know that God is still in control. He loves you. He sees every detail that you make. And that no matter what, we have to stand strong and believe and have hope and have faith that we're going to come out of our situations, no matter how bad they are, because God sees every detail of our lives and he's there by our side to protect us. And we need to put on that full armor of God to help us and be in meditation and in prayer with him and in conversation with him in relationship with him because he's our ultimate friend that never lets us down and he's the one who helps us get out of trouble and get out of situations where we don't think there is a way out so my friends stay encouraged stay blessed know that the lord loves you and i look forward to sharing the word again with you next week god bless you Antonia Roman is the author of Confessions of a Christian Woman, A Journey in Marriage, A New Beginning. In this book, Antonia shares her personal journey in marriage and how she used God's word to help her overcome verbal abuse. Tune in next Saturday as Antonia Roman continues to dive into the word of God. The word of God gives you insight for the purpose in your life.